liberal label lying to you. I'm not terrorist, I'm not perilous, but they have put my youth in the horrible cage for cheating, money, running their bloody policy. So I want you to get your shit together and sort out this mess, or you always be known as Australia's next mess. Help us keep our sanity, remember our humanity. I'm asylum seeker because I ran away from my country because of danger. I flee from danger. We haven't got any kind of like reference point of like a person from Australia in there doing something that's just uh, non-political music. I'm just playing mm. music and then having that just just a as it unfolds situation. The answer is human beings so like we have a family it's been five years yeah. and how long it's gonna take the issue right now here we have in man is like even the situations it's just getting a lot crazier than it was like where we are right now you have got nothing to do in your like center or in the camp or even like in your room like the majority are hopeless and and one of the biggest problems that we have today is like a mental problem. People feel like they don't have a future. Yeah. So when someone reaches that limit, you always think like, what would we do to do to you know get that person out of there? Yeah. And the only um, solution for that situation is the person has to be moved from the where he is to another place. Yeah. We feel like I myself, I feel like we haven't done enough. Right. And still the governments are the winners, you know, yeah, they're yeah. always like achieving what they say. Yeah. yeah, and then also on the other hand also we feel like we need to do more. Sometimes like part of your humanity, it's always drive you towards some other things. Yeah, yeah. And you know, each and every human being has like heart and feelings and we have part of a humanity inside us. But the problem is we need someone that to guide us the right way where we can just explore it out. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, anyway, so she was very excited about it and she was quite um, emotional as well. And she said, um, I want to support your trip. I want to, you know, to pay towards it. And I said, oh, well, um, oh, that'd be lovely. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I've got a crowdfunder. Um, here it is, you know. And she said, no, 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 I want to, um, I want to um, pay, the, pay the balance. and. Mm. And I said, no, 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 you can't do that. No, no, you, but a donation would be fantastic. And then she insisted, she said, no, I want to pay the balance. And by that point, I was like in tears. She was in tears. And we both sat there, I was going, because oh, I couldn't believe it. But I don't know a refugee. Yes, yeah, no. Hello. Yeah, good, how are you? Yes. I'm fine, thanks, how are you? We are human being looking for peace. We are looking for, you know, uh, to to be in a good and safe place. They would, I would have thought they would be potentially normal people, whatever normal is, and potentially people who have done nothing wrong. If yeah, they've done nothing yeah. wrong, then I would have thought um, it would be interesting to find out why they're being locked up. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah, well that is the... Uh yeah, that's a big question, basically. A lovely lady in Melbourne, she's been working with refugees for 20 years, has got enough funds together to buy a new guitar for Farhad. Hey 
Dawn, where are we then? Well, for their fault. Um, and our flight is Brisbane at 22.30. And yeah, we got to the airport. <laughs> and I think you took a photo of all the gear, did you? Did you take yeah. a photo of all the gear? Cool. Because like we had like, I don't know how many bags and... So and then, how many guitars we got? Uh, we've got three. So we've got two in the in the air aircraft, and then I'll be taking one on board, just a very small one. Here's my little one. So this is very handy. And um, and then we've got like two suitcases, um, two extra bags of clothes to give to people. <laughs> what are we going to do now? Uh, repack. Cause we've got to get this down to 16 kg. From 21. From 21. We've got to get this down to 16 from 26. Actually, no, this is going to come down to 8 from 26 because I've got two guitars. We've got good, three guitars. But who's counting? <laughs> uh, but it's all good otherwise. It's most from Manus, who's a sock in the hell since four years without any reason. Listen to me for a minute, por favor. Just want you to be aware about what all the rats have done to me. Liberal label lying to you. I'm not terrorist, I'm not perilous. But they have put my youth in the horrible cage for cheating, money, running their bloody policies. Then one day I was just going to my work and they kidnapped me uh, for 15 days because they were telling me to to fight with them against the government and do some missions. I told them, I'm not able to do this. I'm not able to kill innocent people. And because of that, they, you know, they have to you know, torture me and uh, try to force me. So they tortured you? Yeah, they tortured me. They tortured me, you know. And you was only 20 years old? Yeah, at that time, I was like 21 years or 20 years, yeah. yeah. They tortured me. and. You know, tell like even they prevented me from sleep. You know, yeah. at night every they uh, put you in a very crowded small room that you have nowhere to sit. So you have to sit on your legs like this. So you are not able. If and even if you close your heart, they will wake you up by beating. Yeah. You know, they will beat you by stick. So. Actually, I was there around 15, 16 days, and then uh, I have to lie to them because I have no choice. Yeah. I tell them just, you know, give me my freedom back. I will just think about it and uh, yeah, yeah. try what I can do. Yeah. And then I escape to the government site oh and then God. make some connection uh, to just let me get out of the country. If you refuse, you have no choice. They will just target and kill you. Yeah. You know, if they can reach you, they will, they will kill you right away. Right away. You know, like in October last year, the worst tragedy in Somalian history happened. They killed 569 people at the same time. You know, in a very crowded, you know, uh, bus station. Yeah. And there is a lot of supermarkets around it, and then they they uh, exploded a big lorry. <laughs> Lorry full of you know explosive things. We want to tell you know everybody in Australia and everybody in the world is yeah. that we are not part of that group killing innocent people. Yeah. And actually, they are the ones that we ran away from them. We yeah. ran away from yeah. them to yeah. not be to not be part of them, to not yeah. be with them, to not be you know do what they are doing to the people. Yeah. Actually, they are the one that we are against them. Case for cheating, money, running the bloody policy. So want you to get your shit together and sort out this mess, or you always be known as Australia's next mess. Help us keep our sanity. Remember our humanity. I am, you are, we are all the same. Help us keep our sanity. Remember our. Was it dark? We got no power. The power went out. So um, I had my last meal last night at the, at the pub at the hotel in, um, and then of course we didn't have any breakfast, 
and then we got on the plane. I had three biscuits at the airport, and now we're here, and all we could get from the shop was a bag of rice and a tin of tuna, and... Because um, the shop was pretty um, sparse. sparse. And we had to just go to this one shop because there was lots of people everywhere that were... Um, it was getting slightly dark. Yeah. They're so that's in, not good. We can't be out after five o'clock, basically, and right. the guys need to be on the last bus back because it's not safe. Basically, there's a lot of local people getting drunk and it's not very nice. And but what day is it today? It's Saturday. So Saturday and Sunday are not days to be going around on your own. Why Manus? Why now? And why music? rely on one thing today is like in music and arts yeah just yeah. focus on the music so yeah. with the music when we play we get the attention of the people before even you start playing your music you go on an introductions like reading a short you know a letter about manus the guy who got beaten up has hasn't left his room but like they've been in this in these camps they feared going to the new camp so they're all in they're all in that big one in, in Lombrom and they feared going to the new ones because it was in town and they were fearing attacks by locals and yeah. so some of the guys have never left their rooms or never left the camp they feel safe in the fenced compound of, of the of the camp they're in and this guy hadn't left his room he hadn't left the camp for all the time he's been there yeah. four and a half years and he left that day for the first time and was attacked so yeah so who's protecting them in the camp uh the guards are there the guards live kind of uh, uh, just hang out underneath the, the camp they've got like this sort of the the, the um the, the this one of the sheds they're in is on sort of up high near just underneath mm. and the guards um are there to stop people going in right and if some junk locals come in then they've got to stop the junk locals from attacking them. Um, but they haven't got any protection. There isn't any. The guards actually um, treat them like prisoners, second class citizens, and talk to them horribly. April, uh, the, uh, the High Court of or the High Court of PNG found illegal detention in Manus Island. Because some people don't want to go to the US, mm, so. Show them different mm. the people. I just can I just want to get out of here. Yeah, long yeah. So just get out, mm. get me out of here. Yes, just yeah. get me out of here yeah. in a safe place and that's it. Yeah. 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 It just needs some, you know, like there's just this courage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's yeah. something missing is the courage, you know. They have the uh, ability and 
the passion, but they don't have the courage to start it. No, you know, no. Because if like sometimes I feel like, oh well, you know, I'm aware of, I heard about the refugee, I did a lot of search, I'm aware of the situation, but how would I start supporting those refugees? Yeah. That's the question mark there. In terms of abuse and people like swearing and doing this stuff to you, like a lot of people do that. Yeah. Like, like yeah. for me, every day I get message, text message on the Twitter and like, but I don't care. Nah, yeah, because if you respond to them, you give them yeah. uh, like you make them a little bit important. Yeah, yeah. If you ignore them, yeah. that means like they feel like, oh wow. And you know, ignoring someone, it's really worse. Yeah. Why would she be going to this much trouble if it was, if, it, if we were getting all the truth? And so that's where I've started to get involved and and I've made friendships with the guys on Manus and, and it was through music basically. So I met this one through music and, and then I start finding out the truth about it all. And then I started connecting with all the activists across Australia and then you can see this huge swell of people just doing everything they can to support and then they're getting the truth. Originally they were allowing the guys to go to Port Moresby and a few guys are living and working there but then they're sending them back here again. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So they've changed their minds, you know, like, oh no, we don't, you know. I don't know why they change, they always change their mind. They're playing as like a, yeah. um, a football and they kick and pass to the each other. So I don't know my future, and I don't know where 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 I go. Yeah. Like I'm hopeless and sitting in my room, and 24 hours I couldn't sleep well. Yeah. Just they give us little food, and we cook, and I cook by myself and eat. That's all. Nothing to do. Now yeah. close to five yeah. years. Why? How can you survive in this life? I didn't do anything. But I came in Australia by boat. It's my crime, not my crime, because I don't have anything. They yeah. knew. I don't have any passport, any visa, anything in Myanmar. Yeah. So if, if in Myanmar, if I say I'm Rohingya, the police will arrest me and put me in the jail the rest of my life. So, it, so in Myanmar, um, so in, in Myanmar, does, 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 anybody, does nobody have passports then? No, no, nobody has passport. Nobody has passports? No. Oh, especially Rohingya. Not the Burmese, not the other. Especially in Ark and Rohingya. They don't have anything. So you can't leave? They cannot recognize us as a Rohingya, as a citizenship right. in Myanmar. All right. That's why they are, they try to clean the Rohingya name. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So my family, like, uh, same my position. They are living in the awful place, so I live here. So it's make me like a, it's very tragic. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm comfortable always. Yeah. Always I feel I'm comfortable. How can? Yeah. Because I blame myself. I was born in this house without the, any place, any country, any passport any good life, so I blame myself, I don't blame anyone. Yeah, it's not, it's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's not your fault though. So, when I was born in Mema, I haven't seen a little bit freedom. What is freedom like? Mm. People call the freedom, what is freedom like? I haven't seen, it's still now. 
I have instinct. So I have little bit hope when I get out from this place like America or go to New Zealand, third country. So that time I will feel this is the freedom. I have little bit hope, but sometimes thinking hopeless I will not get the freedom because I'm still here. Yeah, it's, it's very tragic. I'm happy to go yeah, New, Zealand, uh, New yeah. Zealand or America. Or America, yeah. So have you had, so how many interviews have you had now? I had only one interview. One interview. One interview and medical checkup. Medical checkup. So the so next... I, maybe now at least, it's, it's has been only, it's been seven months or eight months now. I've been waiting for the homeland interview. Oh, so then... But the, their process is very slow. Yeah, so your next interview is the home interview. Yes, home interview. Okay, yeah. No, I don't mind. It's yeah. better than Australia. Yeah, even, yeah. Even though they accept us. Yeah, yeah. And actually, in America, they, the refugees are looked after. They have um, health care. Yeah. Um, they have psychologists. They have support groups, case workers. Um, yeah, yeah. Lots of support. Yeah, there are a lot of support. Yeah. I don't mind to go to America, whatever country. If it's suitable, yeah, I can yeah. go there. So the conditions are the worst in the world for these okay. guys. And why is that intentional? Do you think that um, the worst, or that's just circumstance? And well, like Australian, negligence. Australian, this is the worst in the world, right? Compared to Indonesia, Uganda, Bangladesh, these are all like third world nations, and we're a first world nation. So, let's say we thought we might be a good idea to go there. Yeah, yeah. Um, can't we just see it on TV and believe what's what's being shown to us? No. Nah. Like twenty four days with no. The no phone, no, no electricity, no medical care, no, no water. water, even drinking water. So 24 days? 24 days. And then 24 days in the evening prayer day, they brought us by food. So what was happening there? It's happening like when the immigration and police come to our rooms, so they destroy our food and our bunks, our clothes, everything. They throw out from the rooms. And they cut the shampoo and put the shampoo on our beds, so we cannot we cannot sleep on the bed. So they throw everything. We sit on all together. So whatever they destroy, we never tell them why you destroy our food because we we sit in together. We don't like to talk to them. If you talk, if you, if we talk to them, they will beat us and school us. So that's why we don't like to talk to them. They destroy our food, our ah, food, everything. Yeah, and we, yeah. we save the water. We collect the water from rainwater to drink. We dig the hole yeah. to take the water and shower. Yeah. So when they came into the camp and they put, put the stone and like a big stone and some uh, rubbish, rubbish, put them in that uh, dig. So that in that hole, so we cannot take the water and take a shower right. and they destroy our drinking water, everything. So they so, did all this as well, they took all yeah. this, through all these... Yeah, through all this. Right, and so is that, is that the guys' rooms? Yeah, see? this is the guys' living. Right. They destroy everything, their clothes and bed, everything. They are all inside the room, all the shampoos, all the shampoo. Right. So you cannot step in. So, so, when, so when we heard from... Um, 
from Peter Dutton on the radio, Peter Dutton said, oh, the refugees trashed their accommodation. That was all a big lie then. Yeah, that is a big lie. That's yeah. not true. This is the uh, video, this is the truth, everything. Yeah. What I am telling you, what I am talking is the truth. That is the big lie. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah, yeah. So no, how can I... we destroy? Yeah, yeah. So if we destroy our food and our place to sleep, live where we live, so where? Yeah. Where we can sleep? Yeah, yeah. We don't have other place to sleep. It doesn't make that sense. Is, yeah, it doesn't make sense and no. it is totally lie. Yeah, yeah. And I know that there's a lot of, um, they're really struggling with mental health. Um, there's a lot of self-harming going on. Um, and they're really struggling. So they're not even getting the medication. A lot of them have got significant depression and they can't get the medication. That's been stopped. And so, and I mean, look, I can't, I can't fix all that. My, it's not, um, for me, it was more about going over there and going, if I can go over there, and if I can get footage as well, I can bring that back to this community. So it's about what can I bring back to the community to offer something to people more than what I'm doing now. They are allowed out, but we're not allowed in. And many of them won't leave the camp because they're very scared, um, because there's been quite a few attacks on them. Um, and also because they're just, um, they're very um, fragile and emotionally not stable, and you know. They've been there for like almost five years. Um, they've woken up every morning for the last five years not knowing what is gonna to happen to them. That old rusty friend. You are the little canary that paved the way Your lights were shining brighter Cause you knew the way Your lights were shining brighter Cause you knew the way Shining much brighter Cause you knew the way Thank you Thank you So what happens? That's my hand. When I when I come first time to Manos Island, I don't have anything. All also, only here. There's something like the infection or the infection. Know, also, yeah, yeah, that's um, like small thing and they take me to australia i stay there for a month i darwin. see yeah, yeah darwin i see the special doctor there he said very easy i do can't do your operation very easy yeah and i say okay and he said next week i will do the operation and before that's that's time the coming immigration take me send me to manos and i still waiting for hms treatment to maybe more than one years. One year. Yeah, and also they take me to Port Mosby. They bring me to here and yeah. take me to doctor. I think he's India or Pakistani. I don't know. Just I saw him one time, only one time before my operation. After that, when he's do my operation, and I never see him again. And he said the doctor. He said, I can do your operation very easy. Yeah. And he said, only six weeks. 
and when he's doing my brushing, I think he's do wrong and he's cut all the nerve. And I never seen him. He's went to his country, and right now I lost my hand because. So you got no use. Yeah, you got no use. So you show us, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you're this hand. You can't. You can't do no, that. No. You can't. No, because because when I was in Manos Island, I don't have any any trouble in my hand. Yeah. When I come to it, they, he's doing my vibration wrong, and he's got this all this. He's take ten or I don't know what. Yeah. And he's open here, and I lost two finger. Yeah. And can't feel anything. You can't catch this finger now. Yeah. Cold. Yeah, yeah. So you, yeah. so, you, so your hand is dead. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then, and also, you're in pain every day. I think I can not talking without medication. So I take, I take medication three times every which, day. Which medication? Medication tramadol. Tramadol. Benadine four. Yeah. And I don't know. I have many. And many tramadol ones. is is one of the most um, potent medications which is um it's, it's addictive as well it, it yes is, it's, it's, it's I'm, very I'm, I'm right now addicted yeah, because if yeah. i if i didn't use medication without when i wake up without breakfast i cannot do anything i yeah. cannot talk into washing my face the doctor he said if you if you continue with the with that medication big trouble you lose your kidney also you lose your liver because now also i take medication for for, for my, my stomach. All right, and then you also have to take medication, uh, uh, antidepressant medication. Yes, and uh, mental medication. Tramadol, so, I take more than one year when I do my operation. because year. Yeah, because I do this operation one year now. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, when I took Tramadol, they said uh, two weeks, that's two weeks, yeah. I cannot still the medication no. with the Tramadol. Yeah. Yeah, because look, this, this yeah. will come. Yeah. I cannot, I cannot sleeping, I cannot do anything. No, no. Because there's something wrong here, look. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. also this must all the day.
Yeah, it's been very emotional. Uh, not knowing much about their situation. Um, keeping myself, I guess, a bit in the dark before I came, just to uh, not know too much. And uh, all the guys have, have had to leave their country. They didn't have a choice. So they've been here five years. Um, they, a lot of them don't want to come to Australia because of the way they've been treated. And they don't want to talk about their experience um, of getting here. They obviously wanted to get to us, originally wanted to get to Australia um, to get away from their situation in their own country and they're just the way they've been treated um, here and there's no hope for them. Um, some of them are having interviews and maybe going to America. Um, some of them um, have had negative they can't you know, originally when they they um, had their interviews they I think they refused to um, sign something so um, they might have to go back to their country where they came from um, the, the guys are very intelligent and I guess they're not your what sometimes people imagine of refugees so that they are they're young, they're intelligent, um, they're proud of their, of their heritage. Um, they generally um, are quite quiet, uh, reflective of their condition. They, uh, they're, they're quite religious, some of them. A lot of them don't drink. Uh, there's no drugs or anything here. They're well presented. Um, they look after themselves as best they can but there's a lot of mental health conditions here a lot of people um, just if, you, if you've been if you don't have your freedom for five years Liberal label lying to you. I'm not terrorist, I'm not perilous. But they have put my youth in the horrible cage for cheating, money, running their bloody policy. So I want you to get your shit together and sort out this mess. Or you always be known as Australia's next mess. Help us keep our sanity. Remember our humanity. 